Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, this is the third filming I've done on this video. I've already sh filmed this Monday and Tuesday, and yesterday I had a migraine, so I didn't edit it, which is a good thing, because I'm adding to it again today, Wednesday. I promise it will be up today, though. You will be watching this on Wednesday as I'm talking to you. I've already showed you eight different mixed media tags, but they're different levels of mixed media. They're different ways to interpret mixed media. And as I was looking at them, they're beautiful. I love them, but I thought, you know what? Somebody's going to go, mixed media is this, this, and this. So you know what? I'm going to give you traditional hardcore mixed media too with two tags, but it won't take a lot of time because we're going to kind of speed it up since I've already done eight other tags for you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and just tell you what I'm going to do with this one first. This tag is just a blank white tag. And I'm going to start by just decoupaging a book page on it. Okay? So, we'll start with that. And then I'll bring you in closer. With this tag, I'm going to decoupage these two different papers on it. And then I'm going to paint it blue and green. I'm going to use acrylic paints, but I'm going to water them down so the lines still show. With the book page, after I get it on, I'm going to paint it black. But again, I'm going to water it down so you can still see the book page. That's when you'll come back and join me and we'll create true mixed media tags or hardcore mixed media tags because all the ones I've showed you before, the first eight or the last eight maybe, I'm not sure where these are going to go. But anyway, they're mixed media tags too. They're just not thick, heavy mixed media. Anyway, you'll understand once you see these and see the other ones. Thanks for being here as usual. If you're new, we love you. We're glad you're here. If you're a new subscriber, thank you. I promise my videos will be due a week. I will get another one up for you guys on Sunday since this one's going up today, Wednesday. Come on in and let's do this. All right, I started. Here's the book page. I decoupage. Now what I do to get this look is I decoupage the tag. Then I come in and then I just peel some of it off to give it some interest like that. Same thing here, I've just decoupaged the two papers onto the tag. I cut out the tag first. And you can do it, you can add your um, background in chunks if you want to, you know, tear your book page or your papers before you decoupage them down and then just do the little pieces and put them where you want, that's fine. I like this method, it's faster, and I think where it tears is great because it's just by chance. And I'm fine working with that. Now, I'm gonna peel off this big paper because I didn't want it covering the whole thing. I wanted some of this other paper to show through. So I'm just peeling off some of it. Oh, and I like that. All right. Because some of the lines from the paper I had on top, this paper actually stuck to that paper from the decoupage. So there we go. We're going to go with this. I like this look. Perfect. See, you get stuff by accident and it ends up looking really cool. Now, once you get them to this phase, then you can come in with your paints. And let me get some water. Because I'm going to use watercolors on one and watered down acrylics on the other. Okay, now I'm going to get my watercolors and just do that real quick. Green and blue doesn't have to be in a special order. I just want it really light. So I'm going to come over here and use the second lightest blue and I'm kind of just do because I want all these great lines to show. And now I'm just going to get some green and again I'm going light green too. And don't worry about mixing your watercolors because if you mix a color on your paint set on top just take a wet rag, wipe it off. And it comes out. It's watercolors, guys. Okay, there we go. I'm happy. It's just a light coat of blue and green. We're going to let that dry. I 
And I'm just going to use same brush because all that watercolor paint came off. But this one, I'm going to use acrylic paint. So what I do is I shake it up. I use the paint in the lid. My brush is extremely wet. I'm going to leave a little bit of the water there. Dip into my black paint and just spread it out because I don't know if you know, but um, acrylics are water-based paints. So you can thin them with water just like you do watercolors. But I'm just using my brush and a little bit of water to kind of thin it out and move it all the way around. It doesn't have to be all the way around. If I want it thinner, I can just dip my brush in there. Then get the extra paint. And don't worry, I'll wipe that off the lid before I close it and just come in and really kind of do that. And then you come in with a paper towel and blot it. And that's all you do. And you're done. So let me go get a paper towel. Okay, I got my paper towel. I'm just going to come over the top and blot it. And there we go. And that's a pretty background. Now I'm going to dry out my paints real quick. Pull this off. Pull that off. Get that out of the way. What I'm going to do is just take my paintbrush and lay it on this towel because it's been in the water. It's not going to dry out. Now, move the water, the paint out of the way. Now, I'm going to take this big doggy footprint stamp and I'm going to take this black book page tag I just made and I'm going to roll with some white paint a big doggy footprint on here. So let's get some white paint and a tray to roll on. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is use another brush that I pulled out, dip in my paint, and paint my paw print. And I'm only going to do one and you'll see why. Because I'm just going to use it like a stamp. See, I've already done a black. I'm going to do a white. I'm going to come in on my tag. And I'm just going to... There we go. There's a paint group there. This white paint is... <laughs> There we go. All right, and there's our paw prints. Now, we're gonna let this dry. I'm gonna use my paper towel right here and kind of get the excess paint off. And I use this with paint, so it's fine if they get colored. Okay, I'm gonna stick the white brush in the water because that will keep it from drying out. Just remember your acrylics are water paints too, water based, and you can use water to keep your brushes from drying out and all of that stuff. Now, while we're waiting on our paw print guide to dry, we're gonna come over to our blue and green tag here. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna use this stencil, and first I'm gonna use this part right here, and I'm gonna use the brown, the green, and the gray. And then I'm going to come in with this stencil and stencil with modeling paste to create like a, um, oh, what's that called that they grow through? A screen. And then I'll come on top of that with this top part of this stencil. And you're going to see a really cool thing that you can do with a mixed media tag. But before we do that, the background, while very cool, is still a little plain. If you want a true mixed media tag, we need to do some stamping to make it not so paneling. So I'm going to go get everything I need and I'll be right back. I've got my stencil 
And you could freehand this if you wanted to. I'm going to start at the bottom. Got my tag. Oh, before I stencil, I'm going to peel off a little bit of the paper that's coming up just for another layer. Just adds interest. Before I stencil anything, I'm going to come in with my words and add some texture texture to our background. Alright, then I'm going to add some music texture as well as the words. And this is just a set of stamps I got off of Amazon for adding texture to mixed media. And by texture, I mean doing that. That will fade into the background and just kind of be some interest once we're done. Okay, now I'm coming in with my stencil. I'm going to do this first little stencil part down here at the bottom. I kind of want it to come up the tag. Okay, I got my browns, my green, and my purple. Same thing, shake a little paint into your lid. You can pour it out into a little tray if you want. And what I do is I hold the stencil down. You can um, tape it if you want, and I just kind of bounce my brush. You can also just kind of bring your brush. Just make sure you're holding it tight so you don't get too much under your lines. And then I'm going to come in with the next color. So I'll set that right there. And I have to move it. I gotta get the green. It's better if you open all your paints before you start, but I never do. And these grapes are gonna be purple. I actually have a wine color for grapes, which is what had been on here before. But for this, I wanted it bright. So I'm gonna do the grapes first. Same thing, just kind of blot up and down. Okay, and then the green uh, leaves real quick. Again, hold your stencil down and just, if you bounce up and down, you're less likely to go under your stencil, but do you, boo? Do you? Okay, next leaf. So you can use stencils. I mean, I'm showing you multiple tricks to create mixed media tags. Alright, so that's the paint portion. I'm going to dry this really quickly. But that's what we have so far. I'm going to dry this. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now I'm going to come in with this other stencil. That looks like a trellis. That's the word I was trying to think of earlier. A trellis. And I'm going to lay the trellis down over where I painted. And I'm going to come in with my modeling paste. You can use whatever brand. This isn't sponsored, so use whatever brand you want. Got my little palette knife. Hopefully it's not dry. Every time I open it, it dries. And yes, I store it correctly. It stays in my space so then I'm just going to do a little bit though I don't want to like block out this you know I want it to look like a trellis not like a it looks like it's growing in and out of the light there or it could be snow just go with it but anyway that's a true mixed media piece right there now we're going to let this dry and while we're letting that dry we're going to go to our black tag that's been drying this whole time. Okay, and we're going to use our little stamped dog that I cut out. And these were rub-on words that I did, and this is just a piece of paper. And all we're going to do 
remember we want it to be a pocket so tape only or glue only on three sides and I did this on a piece of cardboard this pocket so it would be sturdy it's just not the paper not cardboard cardstock sorry okay and then I'm gonna put this in place at the very bottom here go now I've got a great pocket I've got one paw print showing which is fine let me kind of open it up there there we go now I'm gonna add my little dog on because it said sweet friends and that's my little doggies and there we go there is a true mixed media tag for you and our second one is ready to just let me dry it real quick Also, I'm going to make a tag out of one of my watercolor sheets. Now, you can use bits and pieces to add onto a tag, or you can make your base of your tag from one of your watercolor sheets. And I'm going to make my base from this. I'm going to use one of my tags to trace. And I want a part that's going to get a lot of the colors in. I want some of the blue, some of the green, all of that. Of course, there's lots of pink. Am I getting purple? Yep, getting all the colors. So I think I'm going to do this right here. And again, I wasn't trying to make any specific shape when I did this watercolor. I just was creating watercolor pages. And what I'll do is I'll cut them down smaller and sell the smaller prints after I do stuff to them on my art website. So this is how I'm going to start. I'm going to use my watercolor base and we're going to build on this and we're going to create a really super cool mixed media tag. Now, there is a couple of things you could do on this. I'm going to show you one, but th there's really you're only limited by your imagination. And I specifically use the circles because I'm going to show you a really cool pattern you could create. Again, you could create this pattern from whatever material you wanted to use. I'm gonna use words that I cut up from a book page. You could use a magazine, whatever you want. Here's all my words. And then I'm gonna take my circle in the center, the pink one, and that's gonna be my jumping off point. Now that circle's really big, which I love, but I'm gonna start a little smaller so the pink circle in the end of all this will be a little smaller than it is now and all I'm gonna do are lay my words in a circle and I'm going to start first really tight you know making it smaller and we're gonna get bigger as we go around so next one we're going to use a craft tag and what I'm going to do is use a paper doll and I'm going to attach her to this but you're like well that's what we always do I'm going to show you again remember mixed media doesn't have to be a lot of different types of media it can be two different things like our uh, words and our painted tag with the first one with this one, we're going to use our paper doll. We're going to cut her off. We don't need her feet. And we're going to use our sewing machine and thread. And what we're going to do is kind of make a sunshine around her. And then I'm going to kind of make some lines in her dress as well. And we added some thread around it to be like a sun. We added the same threading on her dress to make it look like, you know, how the sun will hit your clothes and kind of give off a reflection. But it still doesn't look quite complete yet. And the beauty of doing mixed media is you can add to and add to and add to until you get your desired look. And you don't have to add 
the same things. Like I don't have to add more paper or sewing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in an umbrella right here. Like she brought an umbrella with her because the sun's out and it's hot. She already has her big bonnet on, but she brought the umbrella too. So let's add in the umbrella. And you could add this in with paint markers, with pencils, and then go over it. Whatever you feel comfortable doing. I'm just going to do a quick little pen draw in here. And we're not going to draw the bottom to her umbrella because her legs don't have a bottom. But there you go. You could color it in. You could do whatever you wanted to. Now, to finish this off all the way, I'm going to come in with some Distress Ink. Okay, there is our first tag completely finished. And with this, besides words, we're going to mix in some of my watercolor paintings. And I'm going to cut a few strips out of each shade I painted here. And now I'm going to get a couple of other papers. I'm going to use some colorful ones. So I want this one is real pretty and will show up. There's some kind of yellow one in here. I'm going to grab that. Okay, I'm going to use a little cut off of this one. And I'll probably use some of this one. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just cut a little tiny piece off. Okay. I cut a strip of paper from each one of these little scrap papers and from my watercolor. Now I'm just going to lay them on here. You could also do this with different stitches if you wanted to. It's totally however you see it. They don't have to be straight. They can be crooked. They can be straight. They can, you know, whatever you want your paper to look like, your tag to look like, because remember, all this can go on pages too. And it's a great way to create a mixed media tag without taking a lot of time. Just to give it more of that mixed media feel is I'm gonna add some background stamping. And that's just kind of to fill in the space. It's what we do. So I'm going to use this little music stamp and I don't want to get it super inked up because I don't want it to be this star. I just want to have a little ink on it and it got lighter as I stamped it, which is great. Now, I think I'm going to come in with a piece of fabric in the center. What we did was we did a little of that, what I call background stamping that adds a little texture. We had our paper originally. Then we made our, I don't know what would you call it, our badge on here because this is for a kitchen journal. I stamped an image on fabric, which is giving us another layer, another media to add to our tag. I added that to a card, which is different media than the cardstock paper or the watercolor paper and then if you'll notice I folded I creased the fabric so it has a little movement a little wave to it just to add more interest and then I added um, black inking to the edges and a black ribbon because it's so much white I'm trying to kind of ground it and break, break it up the next one we're going to do, we're going to layer on some papers, and I'm just pulling some papers out of here. Okay, I'm going to use a tag for this, and basically I'm covering the whole tag in it. So this is what we have so far. Now on this side, I'm going to bring in my bubble wrap. I'm going to stamp it in my, what color is this? Tea dye. 
and I'm going to press those on here. And then I'm going to come in with my number stamps over here and stamp in 2023 right here with the same color. Okay, this one I totally was not happy with yesterday. It's too plain. It's not anywhere near finished. Well, I'm going to add some stickers. I'm going to add another medium to this tag to give it more interest. And I found these in my stash of stuff, and they're supposed to go on these little buttons, but the buttons are too high. They just poke up too far. For a tag, they're just, you know, too far, too high. So I'm gonna use the letters instead, and I think what I'm gonna do is on this coffee stain paper I stamped with bubble wrap. I'm gonna put the stickers and spell out August. Then I have this room to write and this is gonna be in my planner for August. So let's just do it real quick. And now here's our completed tag. And you can see how much better it looks from what we started with just a few seconds ago. And again, this is mixed media. We've added several different things to it. We've added the stamping, but I will write over all of that. It's just a great looking tag now. Okay, so now we're gonna finish up really fast and we're gonna do, oops, there's what I was looking for. We're gonna do these last tags. And this first one is the paper to me that looked like a lake scene. And here you can see, it looks like the banks, a river, and some grass, right? Okay. So I'm coming in, and this is paint, so that's one medium. And then I'm going to come in with a die-cut flower, a magazine-cut watering can, and my watercolor blue paper strips here that I cut in to look like water. And what I'm going to do is glue this down, all down. But before I do it, let's create a little bit of interest. And by interest, I mean let's do texture. And people for mixed media and texture, they stamp up the background. So I found my little ink. And I'm going to use again, I don't want it to be overpowering, so I'm going to use my tea dyed stamp. And you just stamp all over. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be dark. It just needs to be kind of all over. It can be just a few words. Okay? So that's the beginning. And now we're going to add our images that we're going to add. But that's what it looks like. Okay, now we're going to add our images real quick. And I'll be right back. Now we're going to finish up really fast. And this first one is the paper to me that looked like a lake scene. And here you can see it looks like the banks, a river, and some grass, right? Okay. So I'm coming in. And this is paint, so that's one medium. And then I'm going to come in with a die-cut flower, a magazine-cut watering can, and my watercolor blue paper strips here that I cut in to look like water. And what I'm going to do is glue this down, all down. But before I do it, let's create a little bit of interest. And by interest, I mean let's do texture. And people for mixed media and texture, they stamp up the background. So I found my little ink, and I'm going to use again, I don't want it to be overpowering, so I'm going to use my tea dyed stamp. Okay, once you get your image on, and I did just a little bit of water dots on the flower with a pen, 
Now for this last one, I'm going to do the design sideways. And what I see when I look at this tag is citrus. I see oranges, limes, and lemons. So what I'm going to do is just draw what I see in my head onto the tag. So it's just a fun way. You could add stamping if you wanted to. You don't have to. You could add whatever you want. I'm going to leave this like this because this is going in my kitchen journal. And I'm happy with it. Now this one, last night as I was getting it ready for the end of the video finished ones, I stamped graffiti on the rock wall. I think it just looked right. It kind of spoke to me. There you can see it. Now, what would I do on the rest of this? Very simple. I totally finished with our graffiti stamped on the wall. This one I did totally off camera. I love it. I call it the flight of the butterfly. I took a toilet paper roll and stamped the black circles and then I sewed a red circle. So that's two mediums. Then I did a sticker butterfly and then the trail is a black marker. Hey guys, I wanted to show you what a full mixed media canvas looks like. This is my flower vase. As you can see, I did the background stamping. I did some doodles. I did words. My flowers are fabric flowers. Some of the leaves are paper. The vase is paper. I doodled on the vase as well. And the background is painting with layered book pages underneath as well. I don't know if you can even see them, but if you'd like to see how to do maybe a page or a journal cover of, you know, mixed media like this, or if you'd like to see a canvas and do a canvas with me of mixed media, comment down below, you know, mixed media canvas or mixed media journal cover, and we will definitely do that for you. So guys, I hope you enjoyed these new ideas. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget, please hit that subscribe button with that little bell. We've got a lot of great videos coming your way and you don't want to miss out. Oh, and leave me a comment down below. What is your favorite kind of tag to make? What is your go-to tag to make? Also, big news, if you like my fitness channel, or my vintage channel, there's exciting things happening on both. My fitness channel, I'm posting classes once a week, twice a week, shooting for twice a week. Also, the website is all updated, go check it out. My vintage channel, we are now ready to host your vintage tea parties, picnics. It's an exciting time, plus we're moving our Etsy shop from Etsy to our own site, which will save all of you money. So go check out those websites, they're down below too. Thanks for being here. Take care and I'll see you next time.